Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. Thanks for joining us every day right here on VTM. Our topic this week is understanding heavenly things. We've already covered a lot about heaven. We know it's a real place. We know it's where God lives. We know it's in the northern part of the universe. We know it's the capital of the universe. There's so many things we've learned about heaven. But we're going to continue today. I, I want to talk to you about one more thing that opens the windows of heaven, and that is the tithe. But we're, all, we're going to go into the rest of the day today and tomorrow talking about heavenly things that are available to us today. And that's why it's important that you know and understand about heaven. Stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. Okay, let's go to Malachi chapter 3. I usually say a very familiar passage of Scripture, <laughs> but I have since found out in some churches it's not very familiar. But in our church, it was. Every time I uh, would say, okay, everybody, turn to Malachi. What chapter? They'd say 3. What verse? 10. Because you have to teach these things. Uh, teaching is repetition of a truth. People have to know these things, and they won't know if, if you as a pastor don't teach them. You're the under-shepherd. You're to, you're to teach them the Word of God. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes. The tithe is a tenth. The tenth of your increase. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house or food in my house and prove me now herewith saith the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and there's more I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes he will not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the field for the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now God rebukes sometimes over the lack of dedication of tithes. In um, one particular place, uh, he told the people that they kept putting uh, money in their pockets with holes in it because they were not bringing the proper tithe to the Lord. They were bringing the lamb that was sick, had his eyes poked out, cuckle burr in his fur, in his wool. And God was saying, you know, you, why don't you, you're bringing me all of this um, uh, damaged goods or stuff that's lacking or things nobody else would have. <laughs> You're bringing me all of this stuff. Why don't you take it to the governor, pay your taxes with it, and see if he would accept it? No, he wouldn't. So God says, I, I want you to bring me uh, the lamb that you raised from uh, a baby. I want you to bring me the best that you have. I want you to bring me the first 10%. I don't want you to pay all your bills and then give me what's left over. I want you to give me the tenth, the tithe off the top, the first 10%. And when you do, worship me with the tithe and the open windows of heaven, I'll pour out a blessing upon you. There's not room enough to receive it. Uh, let me go on reading it because something came to me while I was reading this. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Uh, most of the place in the Bible, the Bible tells you to rebuke the devourer yourself. You have the authority and the power in Jesus' name to rebuke the enemy, uh, to rebuke the thief. But here God says, I will rebuke the devourer. If you're a tither, you have a right to ask God to rebuke uh, the devourer. And for your sakes, he will not destroy the fruits of your ground or cause your vine to cast its fruit before the time in the field. And all nations 
will call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord. When I became a Christian, uh, when I got born again, I realized, I, I've realized things in my family, especially in my grandparents' family, my father's mother and father, particularly. They made it through the Great Depression, the 30s. All their children were educated, went to college, prospered, succeeded, which included my father. My father went through the Great Depression. My grandparents went through it. Now, they weren't rich by any means, but they never lacked anything. And I found out, and my grandfather, Caldwell, he used to take me uh, downtown Little Rock and, and drive down Capitol Avenue. And he said, now, during the Depression, and he taught me a lot. He used to take me up to the state capitol, up into the... Um, The grandstand, not the grandstand, they call it, where you can go up there and sit and watch the legislators do business in the gallery. And he would explain to me the political process. And we were sitting up there, and I was just a young boy. And he would teach me these things. He even knew some of the senators and congressmen and so forth. And <laughs> he had pretty choice words to say about some of them. But he nevertheless was educating me in his generation. And uh, he told me, he said, I used to come down Capitol Avenue. He worked at the, the postal office. He, he worked at the main post office. It's still on Capitol Avenue. He was the superintendent of mails. And uh, he worked down there every day. Uh, he had an automobile, but he didn't always drive his automobile. He'd ride the streetcar. And he said, I used to come to work down here, and uh, I would see men lined up. Uh, all down Capitol Avenue waiting to either get a bowl of soup or a loaf of bread or a job. During the Depression days, there was not a lot of jobs to be had, and you'd wait in line. They might pick you up and take you out to work somewhere. Or if you didn't get work, you could get a bowl of soup or a loaf of bread. And then my grandmother began to tell me that uh, they were raised, they, they attended Emmanuel Baptist Church for, who 65 or 70 years. And they always tithed to their church. And when I heard that after I became a Christian and I heard all of that, I realized why they never wanted anything. I realized why they never lacked anything. Like I said, they weren't rich, but they were, they were blessed. And all of a sudden it dawned on me that God blessed them from heaven because they always tithed. Even through the Depression years, they tithed. That's why my grandfather never lost his job. That's why he had a job all the way through the Depression. Now, grandmother didn't work. She stayed at home, raised four children, and blah, blah, blah. But grandfather did work. And he worked hard, and he was proud of what he did. He, was, he built his own house, built his own furniture. I mean, he came out of the 1800s. He was born in 1889. And he worked hard, and he was trained with his hands. Before he died, he took me out into his workshop, which was a garage behind their house, which was there also their barn, where they kept the milk cow and the chickens. <laughs> and, of course, in those days, they grandfathered all that in. They didn't make them get rid of them. When they changed the city limits and the laws, uh, if you live in the city. But he'd, he'd show me his tools. They were all hand tools. There were no power tools. Uh, the a hand auger bit, a, cr a cross cut saw, the ripping saw, uh, uh, the plane. He, he, in fact, I have them all now. He gave them to me before he died. He said, I want you to have these. I did send the plane. If you don't know what that is, look it up, P-L-A-N-E, plane. I did send the, send the plane to Andrew Womack and gave it to him to hang up in his wood workshop because he works with woodworking tools, and I wanted him to have it as an antique. And I realized that the reason the windows of heaven were opened on my grandfather and on my father and my family 
was because they were tithers. And the Bible says, I'll open the windows of heaven, I'll rebuke the devourer. Now, in those days, it was not only my grandparents, but it, were, it was almost everybody's grandparents. Because we were taught that to, in the church, we were taught to tithe. And when my father and other fathers and men and women came back home after World War II, 1945, America experienced a wave of prosperity and a wave of revival. People were tithing. People had been taught to tithe. And they knew the ones that tithed. They knew that it was their tithe that kept them all through the Great Depression and all through World War II. They knew it was their tithe. They're, they're worshiping God with their tithe, the 10%. But you know, if you don't keep teaching that and demonstrating that, it wanes and it has waned. I don't know, maybe some of the polls that have been, token, uh, been taken on the church. I think the last figures that I heard, and don't hold me to this, it changes constantly. Uh, less than 10% of, of Christians tithe anymore. It may not even be that much. And I, I, look, I looked here and I saw all nations shall call you blessed. The reason America was so blessed is because the people tithe to God. They gave their tithes and offerings. You notice he said, bring your tithes in, and offerings. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Bring, bring in your tithes and offerings. And in, in verse 14, uh, 13, he rebukes and says, your words have been stout against me. You've said, what have we spoken so much against you? He said, you've said it's vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we've kept this ordinance that we have walked mournfully or reverently uh, before the Lord. So there is a there is a way that you can actively open the windows of heaven, and God will pour out a blessing upon you. It represents rain, prosperity, blessing, healing. We had a healing revival after the war was over. Nineteen forty-five, in the late forties, early fifties is when all the healing evangelists emerged. Oral Roberts being, quote, I guess, at the top tier. And you had men like uh, um, R.W. Schembach, Oral Roberts. Uh, you had uh, men that raised the dead, uh, that cast out devils. Uh, you had A.A. A. Allen, Jack Coe. I have a picture of Jack Coe's tent set up out at the fairgrounds off Roosevelt Road here in Little Rock in the uh, late 1940s. And we had uh, uh, revivals in this nation. And we had supernatural manifestations of the Holy Spirit because this nation was blessed. We, we kept the home fires burning, as they said. We continued to serve God, continued to tithe, continue to go to church, continue to worship God. We were at war, not of our own choosing. The whole world was at war. And people were praying and they were believing God. And it was a hard time. Uh, the Great Depression in the 30s and then World War II in the 40s was a two, two back-to-back -back whammies on this nation. But we survived because of God and because the church company obeyed the Scriptures. Now, let's, let's move on. I want to go to, uh, um, let's see, I want to go to John chapter 3. So let's, let's go forward to John chapter 3, and let's look at verses 1 through 12, because I've got a limited amount of time here to get all this in today and tomorrow. Let's go to heavenly things. Um, from natural things to heavenly things. Let's go to uh, John chapter 3 and verses 1 through 12. Well, let's start at verse 3. Jesus answered Nicodemus and said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus is asked how a man can be born when he's old. And Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, 
except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth. You hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell from whence it comes. And hither and where it goes, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. He was talking to him and contrasting natural things and spiritual things, earthly things and spiritual things. Now, let's go over to 1 Corinthians and let's go to chapter 15. Read verses 45 through 49. And so it is written, the first man, uh, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Let's talk about Jesus. How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which was natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is, is, is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now notice, don't, don't get this confused. A lot of people do. Jesus is never called the second Adam. He's called the last Adam. Remember when he appeared to John in the book of Revelation? He said, I'm the first and the last. If he was the second Adam, there could have been a third, a fourth, a fifth. But no, he was the last Adam. He was going to set everything right. As is the earthy, so are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we've borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. You remember when in Genesis 1 it says, and God said, let's make man in our image and likeness? He was talking about a spirit being. A spirit being is a heavenly being. And uh, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And then he says, I'm going to show you a mystery. Now, I'm not going to read all of that because I, I, I wanted you to hear that, but I want to go to something else. Um, let's go over to... Um, well, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And let's begin reading with uh, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world under our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, the deep things of God. Now we're talking about the difference between the heavenly and the earthly. We are to know heavenly things. There are secrets in heaven that we are supposed to know and can know. But you can't know them naturally. You, you have to know them spiritually. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I, I've heard ever since I've been a Christian that you, you can't know the things of God. Sure you can. I've heard them say, you know, well, the things of God are past finding out. They are naturally. You, you can't know the things of God naturally because God's not natural. He's supernatural. He's telling us a heavenly thing here. 
The Spirit searches the deep things of God. You cannot know the things of God naturally, but you can know the things of God spiritual. We have received not the Spirit of the world, <laughs> but the Spirit which is God. Now listen to this that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So you have to put everything in its context, which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teach, but what the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And here's, here's this, the, the censure. Verse 14, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit, cannot know the things of the Spirit naturally. You can only know them spiritually. The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So we can know the things of God, but we know them spiritually. We don't know them naturally. But he that is spiritual judges all things or discerns all things. He himself is judged of no man, for who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now, the Apostle Paul goes on and says something to the Corinthian church members here that we need to, to read, chapter 3, uh, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for thereunto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. <laughs> You're carnal, where is there is among you envy and strife and division, are you not carnal and walk as men? In other words, Paul was saying to the Corinthian church, hey, at one place he said, you come behind in no gift. You're spiritual people, but I could not talk to you beyond your ability to comprehend because you're thinking naturally and I'm talking spiritually. I had to feed you with milk because you cannot comprehend and you cannot eat meat that you may grow thereby. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can add this too, if I can find this scripture. Uh, let's see. I was, I was thinking about over in Hebrews, where it talks about uh, spiritual things and they could not understand it. It's, it's the same. It's just a companion uh, a, a thought. Okay. Let me see uh, if it's another. <clears throat> well, <laughs> can't find the scripture. But Paul was saying, saying to um, the Corinthian church, he said, I cannot talk to you about spiritual things because you're carnal. Now, if we are going to understand heavenly things, and we're supposed to, uh, we're going to have to understand the spiritual things that he uh, shows us. Uh, let's go over to. Well, no, I want I want to save that for for tomorrow. Let's let's identify some of the heavenly things. Number one, Ephesians chapter one verse three. Let's let's go over there. I apologize for losing my place there, but. For the sake of time, let's, let's move on. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places in Christ. Heavenly places. Okay. He chose us from the foundation of the world. Verse 4. He hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Verse 5. He predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse 5. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Now, let me, let me make these statements. Here's some heavenly things we need to identify with. He chose us before the foundations of the world. He predestined us to the adoption of children. Now, we could go over to Romans chapter 8 and clarify this, and we might if we have time. Not today. We only have about a little over a minute and a half. Don't let the language um, confuse you. He's not saying that he predestined who was to be saved and who wasn't. He's not talking about predestination in the legal sense or Calvinism or fatalism. What he predestined was the adoption that we would have in Christ. Anybody that confessed Christ and became a new creature was adopted into the family of God. That's what he predestined. But the Bible says whosoever will. God didn't choose who would be saved and who wouldn't be saved. He chose us before the foundation of the world. So we were always in his mind and in his heart. Jeremiah, the Lord told Jeremiah, he said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. You were, you were in my heart. You were in, in the future. He made us acceptable in the beloved. Hmm. He made us partaker of the heavenly calling and the heavenly gift. Then in Colossians 3, we'll, we'll, we'll have to do this tomorrow. It, he told us to set our mind on heavenly things. So that's where we're going to start tomorrow. Set our mind on heavenly things, not on earthly things. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching. Too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. Or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.